Ready? Okay, we have a question here where we're asked to name all the isomers and to draw and then name all the isomers of a molecule with the formula C6H12. Now, when you have the formula C6H12, one of the ways to determine uh, the shape of the isomers that are involved in the molecule is to compare them to the parent alkane, which is C6H14. All alkanes have the general formula uh, CnH2n plus 2, so it's always double the number of carbon atoms plus 2. If you have a molecule that does not have that formula, you can compare it to the parent alkane, you, you subtract the, the, uh, the formulas and you find out how many hydrogen atoms are missing. If, if for every two atoms that are missing of hydrogen, it signifies the molecule either has a double bond or a ring. So this molecule has two hydrogen atoms missing, and we call that the index of hydrogen deficiency. If you take the index of hydrogen deficiency and divide it by two, sorry, the hydrogen deficiency and divide it by two, you get the index of hydrogen deficiency. And for every value of one in the index of hydrogen deficiency, you either get a ring or a double bond. If a molecule, on the other hand, is missing um, eight hydrogen atoms, that uh, you, it usually points to uh, a benzene ring, an aromatic compound. Benzene, for example, has, an exam uh, has a formula of C6H6, whereas the parent alkene has a formula of C6H14, so it's missing eight hydrogen atoms. Enough on that. Uh, we'll continue now with all the different isomers that you can draw. So we have to draw all the isomers that either have a ring or a double bond. So the best way to answer this question is to do it systematically. Start with the biggest ring and work your way down. So the biggest ring you can draw using six carbons is cyclohexane. Then uh, we move down to five-membered rings, and we get uh, cyclopentane, but we have one extra carbon atom, so we put a methyl group on it. So we get methyl cyclopentane. That exhausts all the possibilities for the five-membered ring, because if we simply put them in a different position, it's still the same name. The next possibility is a four-membered ring, but with two extra carbons to play with. The first and most logical um, molecule we should name is ethyl cyclobutane. Then we start moving down to single methyl groups in the same position, so it can be called 1,1 one, one dimethyl cyclobutane. If you move the ring to the next, uh, if you move the methyl group to the next position on the same cyclobutane, you get 1,2 dimethyl cyclobutane. And you also get the possibility uh, of 1,3 dimethyl cyclobutane. I didn't bother by anything up here, but it's the same as this one. Then uh, the seventh possibility involves uh, cyclopropanes. We started that over here. So we did isol uh, isopropyl cyclopropane. Isopropyl has three carbons in it. The cyclopropane ring has three carbons in it, so that's a total of six carbons. Then we move to propyl cyclopropane. One ethyl, one methyl. Notice how I've alphabetized the substituents. E comes before M. So they're in the same position. That's why it says 1, 1. Then we start moving the substituents around. This looks like another ethyl. So I'm going to redraw that. That's good. 10 is 1 ethyl, 2 methyl. Uh, there's no such thing as 1 ethyl, 3 methyl because it would still be called 2 methyl. We'd count it the other way. Uh, the 11th possibility is. Now we're using only methyls on the cyclopropane, so we get 1, 1, 2 trimethyl cyclopropane. Notice how each substituent gets, its, gets a number to describe its position. Then we have 1, 2, 3 trimethyl cyclopropane. You can't have 1, 1, 3 because you would actually rename it as 1, 1, 2 uh, trimethyl cyclopropane. That exhausts all the possibilities with a ring. We get 12 isomers from that alone. The 13th isomer, and the most logical one to name, with six carbons in it, is a hexene. So the double bond is on the terminus end. Then we start moving the double bond down the, down the molecule. So we get hexene, two hexene. Now, because the double bond is rigid, it presents you with two possible isomers, cis and trans. Cis is when both um, substituents are on the same side of the double bond. Trans is when they're on opposite sides. Uh, moving down, we get 3-hexene, again, cis-trans, trans-3-hexene, trans, 
cis 3 hexene. The 18th possibility, what we've done is move down to pentenes, but now we have an extra methyl group to play with. So what do we put it? We can't put it at the first position because that would bring us back to making a hexene molecule. So we put it at the second position, and we call that 2-methyl pentene. And we don't put a number for pentene because it's the, the double bonds at the first position. Then we have 3-methyl pentene. We move the, that methyl group one more down. And 4-methyl pentene, moving it to the fourth position. There is no 5-methyl pentene because that would be back to hexene. Uh, the 21st molecule is now going to move the double bond to the second position and the methyl group at the second position as well. So we get 2-methyl, two 2-pentene. Two this cannot be cis-trans because the methyl groups here are both the same, so by flipping them over you wouldn't change the molecule in any way. So there's no cis-trans isomerism for the 2-methyl, two 2-pentene. Two the 22nd possibility is to get the methyl group in the third position, so we would call that cis, 3-methyl, 2-pentene. Here we do have a possibility of cis-trans isomerism because the two heavy uh, parts of the molecule can be on the same side. There's a hydrogen atom here, so that would be light compared to methyl. And here we have a methyl and an ethyl, so the ethyl is the heavier one. So the two heavier things are on the same side, we call that cis. When the two heavier things are on opposite sides, sides we call it trans. So they're both 3-methyl-2-pentene. The methyl group is at the uh, third position, 1, 2, 3. Here's that methyl group. And the double bond is at the second position, 1, 2. We can always count it from the side that's going to get the lowest number to the uh, double bond. Twenty-fourth possibility, we've moved the um, methyl group to the fourth position, so we call it trans 4 methyl 2 pentene and it's also the cis isomer of the same molecule, cis 4 methyl 2 pentene In the 26th possibility, now we've exhausted all the pentenes, because if we move the methyl group to the terminus end, we're going to go back to hexene. So now we've moved down to the, shorten the molecule one more, down to butene. We put the double bond on the end, and the two remaining methyl groups at the third position. Um, and that gives us 3,3-dimethylbutene. Again, no number because the butene, the, the double bond is at the first position. You can also have two three dimethyl butene. So you take that methyl group and put it here. Uh, we can also have an ethyl group at the second position. You count from the side that's going to give us the lowest number for the double bond. So it's two ethyl, two, sorry, two ethyl butene. The double bond is at the first position. And finally, the last possibility is to flip that double bond to the second position. We still have two methyl groups to play with, so we get 2,3-dimethyl, 2-butene. And there are 29 isomers with the formula C6H12. If you wish